like to welcome you back to uh, our podcast here with Ultimate Athlete Concepts. We're uh, doing a series with uh, our friend Hank Kreinhoff, along with uh, Jeff Moyer from Dynamic Correspondence, discussing vibration training. This is the second installment thereof. Um, the last time we talked, Hank, we talked a little bit about whole body vibration. You kind of gave us the background on that and, uh, and, and some of the uh, practical applications that you saw. And so to review that, I'd just like to ask you a couple questions uh, to review kind of what we talked about before and then kind of transition into uh, a few more of the concepts and broaden it into the vibration training, which is actually separate of whole body vibration. Yep. So welcome. Thanks a lot for joining me again, Hank. Thanks, Jeff. And uh, let's get right to it. When we talked uh, last time, Hank, you said that you had used the vibration training successfully with the athletes. And uh, you placed it during a lot of times in the training sessions, and you would you would uh, have the uh, the vibration segments prior to like plyometrics and or strength training and those workouts. You kind of do about five minute segments and then go into the other. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions, something I don't know if I asked you this before, but but it, but came to my mind. Do you want to reserve this uh, training, the vibration training, until the athlete is is higher level, where they're kind of getting to the threshold of on the upper end of that maybe their genetic ability? Is is this kind of where you want to use that tool to push it forward? Yeah, it's a it's a very powerful training stimulus. So uh, like I always say, don't play your trump card in the beginning of the game. Uh, you play your trump card at the end of the game. Right. And there's nothing left. It's like shooting with a with a cannon on a, on a mosquito. It doesn't make sense. So it only makes sense when you meet an elephant. The cannon may, starts to make sense, but not when you meet a mosquito in the beginning. So then you have no nothing left in the end. Right. So right. and it's a very powerful uh, 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 training stimulus, even if you don't know it, even if you're not punished by pain or by fatigue. So this is so you think it's very light, has no effect whatsoever. So people, when you feel pain, people say, "Wow, this is powerful." When they get tired, say, "This is a powerful training stimulus." When you don't feel anything, they think this this cannot do anything for me, right. and it just does. It, it just does. Even if you don't know, it, you can see from the results later on. But it's very powerful. So don't 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 play a trump card in, uh, in the in the beginning of your career when you can find different ways uh, to to increase strength in a, let me say a, a normal way. Right. So we would be using this later on. The athlete would be in their twenties probably, and we'd be using it during that course where they're trying to reach up to the high level uh, of, of, of their genetic ability or high, you know, high level as an athlete where other things are not as effective anymore. You know, now you kind of want to use this unique and tool. It should become dangerous. For instance, if they have injuries or limitations, they have a, um, uh, a back problem, a hernia problem, a sciatic problem, then they can put much load on the back. They can do leg presses or whatever, but you can also enhance strength or expose strength with, uh, with uh, whole body vibration. Yeah. So if there is a limitation somewhere else that you cannot do the program that you wanted to do because you know they should do it, they're still reserved in the limits in the normal training, but they can't execute it because of uh, physical limitations. Then it's great to use the whole body vibration uh, in order to at least uh, minimize the load and minimize the risk. And and with that athlete, this is going to be used more in specific per uh, spirit periods of specialized work, not in the general phases. So you're not going to be using this all year round. Uh, is no. my guess. Am I correct? No. We did in the beginning just because we got the machine in a, in a period, in a general preparation period, say, what the hell, let's, let's, let's see what, what's going to happen. Now, it happened, but it worked better. So, in any type of sport, when you have a, a general preparation period, you do a foundation of aerobic work, the vibration machine increasing, especially explosive strength, is not going to work for you that much. You increase explosive strength, but not that much. The moment you start to, in a spe specific training phase, I do more speed work and more sprinting work, it will, well, kind of support that kind of work uh, much better. You see a better effect there, both from the, from the jumping and the plyometrics and explosive strength, and of course the vibration. So there it finds its real, real place. When you're just jogging and stretching a little bit, vibration, well, no. So it's, do it's, not, and it's not giving you what you want. So you're going to use it in those phases the closer you're getting to competitions, you know, yeah. six, eight weeks out, something like yeah. that in those phases, depending yeah. on the length of time that you've been training. So yeah. now uh, we talked about earlier that it's used in, in conjunction with, um, with uh, all, all of your other work. We're using it for about five minutes prior to that training. Now, 
here's the question that that kind of uh, remains: when we get into next year, yeah. and you know, as you know, like if you used previously the year before, you used a depth jump at a certain height over a certain amount of time, you know that it's probably going to stop being effective. You know, the, the rebound height is going to start stagnating. What is the adaptation to vibration training over the long term? What does that look like? How do you, do you make changes or do you kind of hit a ceiling and then that's it? You know, how does that work? It's still an enigma. It, it, it's still not, 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 not very clear. But what we found out uh, very, very early is that, that there is very little adaptation. Uh, there's a, a lot of adaptation there, but it doesn't stop. The adaptation doesn't adapt. This is the problem. <laughs> okay, right. The adaptation doesn't adapt because... Uh, don't forget the, the stimulus that your neuromuscular system gets, so not your joints or not your bones, but your, your muscles, your tendons, and your nervous system, is that in five minutes of vibration, let's say 30 hertz, if 30 jumps over, um, let me see, uh, a two foot, two foot and a half uh, hurdle, um, you jump over in five minutes, it's, uh, in one second, you jump over 30 hurdles. So in 60 seconds, you jump over 1,800 hurdles. So that means in five minutes, you jump over 9,000 hurdles. <laughs> well, what more can you ask for? I mean, how can you uh, adapt? You, you, you can jump over a million hurdles. It's not going to help you anymore. But right. the, five, the 9,000 hurdles is going to help you to, in, uh, to improve your explosive strength uh, tremendously. So... No, it, it doesn't do that. And there's something strange as well, the same like with the hypergravity system that Bosco invented. Normally we learn um, the faster you gain it, the faster you lose it. Yeah. No, uh, uh, a motor quality of the strength or speed. So uh, easy gain, easy lose, uh, lose it. And in vibration, it's, it's, this is not the case. You, you gain explosive strength very easy, very fast, and you lose it in a much slower rate than, than normally. So normally when you see uh, gaining and losing are like in this pyramid, you, here you uh, uh, gain it and here you lose it, in vibrations like this. So you gain it in a much faster rate and you lose it in a much slower rate. And the same thing applies to hypergravity because the very extremely high density of the stimulus, not of the intensity or the, the volume, is the t tremendous density there. Oh, that's interesting. So, so really as you progress with your running, you get better use the, the, the vibration training, even though it may be the same Hertz level and you maybe have used it over a course of, you know, a couple of years, you're still seeing adaptation, you're still moving the, the needle yeah. uh, at, that, at that point. That, that's what's, to me, that's what's the most amazing because, you know, we all know, okay, we can get some results out of some tool, but then it's going to end. You know, a lot of different, you know, things that have come before, it ends fairly quickly. Uh, yeah. But the, the unique thing about whole body vibration is that, it, 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 it can still, even though it's technically the same stimulus, it can still have that, that spur adaptation yeah. for the athlete's career. Because mainly it's a, it's a, it's a very strong a, a central stimulus, not only a peripheral one. So I'm pretty sure that we change something in the plasticity of the brain somehow, somewhere. I mean, it's, it's a very hard to, to, to figure it out. Uh, I doubt if somebody already did, but... It must be something on central level as well, and a perfect cooperation between the central level and peripheral level. Probably it's in the combination of those two. They are very well connected to strengthen for the first time. So you can think about a movement a lot con uh, in, in your cognition or visual visualize a lot, but nothing happens in your muscles, basically. Now you can train very uh, uh, quite a lot and uh, watch TV in the meanwhile, like, uh, 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 and thoughtless, brainless exercise. And some things might happen in the muscle, but not in your coordination. Yeah. And this one uh, uh, improves uh, uh, both. The other um, strange uh, phenomenon is that uh, we learned, at least I learned, that training is specific. That what you train improves. So if you want to jump high, jumping in slow motion, vertical jumps in slow motion won't help you that much. Right. Why not? Because the knee extension velocity is way too low. So you can, there's no better way to increase jumping than by jumping. Unless you reach the ceiling there, then you can uh, in increase it again by the maximum strength and other things as well, I understand. But basically, the best thing to do is the, more, is the specific movement. Well, that's clear. Well, in vibration, if you look at this from a biomechanical point of view, then you're standing on the platform, 
and your knee angle doesn't change at all. You're standing there with a 90 to 100 degrees of knee angle on a platform. You don't move at all. And still, the improvement you get is in the fastest uh, form of knee angle velocity, they, apart from sprinting and running, of course, is in the vertical jump. That's kind of strange. So you can, the, the faster your knee angle of velocity, the higher you will jump vertically. So you get a tremendous improvement in there while you're not moving at all with a with with velocity of zero. You're standing there on the platform and your knee angle doesn't change. That, that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a, I mean, you know, that it's kind of a secret weapon, I guess, if you will, you know, to, yeah, to yeah, kind yeah, of avoid, avoid stagnation. Now, to the, to the point that I always like to get to are the results. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 would you say? You know, with and I know this is this is going to be a guess. It's not going to be exact. But how much effect would you say it had on like if you have a hundred meter sprinter, sixty meter sprinter? How much do you, time do you think it helped take off? And I know this that's you can't answer that precisely. But what would your guess be if you if you just threw a value out? I think no. Well, the complexity of it is that. Nobody ever does only vibration training. Right, right, right. So I know that you can't, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to single it out. Itself, the vibration works in itself, and it enhances the other stuff. Right. It makes the weightlifting and, and the gym training uh, much better. So it works directly and indirectly. And I think uh, both, if you would only do vibration training, it would be one-tenth of a second in the 100 meters. If you do vibration and the normal stuff that you do, it would be two tenths of a of a of a second in in uh, two hundredths of a sec no uh, two tenths of a second in hundred meters. That's Unless you are you are Usain Bolt, of course, then you already at the edge of what's genetically and yeah. humanly possible. Yeah, but a guy that's two. running like a ten two, you could say he could drop from a ten two to a ten uh, by inserting this into the training over his career. Yeah, yeah. If not, if, not if, in one not in one off season, but over the course. Oh of no, no no no! But if, no, well, maybe even that. Maybe really? even that. Seen, I've seen one tenth of a second in sixty meters. Really? So that, and with with uh, with uh, and I didn't have a, a group of hundred athletes, but in in the limited group of athletes, around eight to ten athletes, I've seen uh, well eight uh, from six hundred to to one tenth of a second, so six to sixty to one hundred milliseconds in uh, in uh, in my sprinters. Uh, uh, yeah, and so, I, you you obviously you know. Had, had been working with him prior to introducing vibration training in. So you knew what kind of rate you were on as far as improvement, the curve. And then when you added, I'm assuming that when you added the vibration in it, it threw the curve off a little bit and all of a sudden the results jumped up yeah. to a better level. You, you you Instead of marginally declining like you would expect, you start yeah. to see a little bit of marginal improvement. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's perfect. So, so, yeah. so, so the, the rate of, the rate of, the rate of, of, of improvement went up. No. The, 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 like I said, every, every, every workout is a biological experiment. So looking at results, absolutely true. If you look at scientific results, it's, it's a little bit uh, ambiguous. Uh, why? Because it depends on the machine that you're using, it depends on the protocol that you're using, it depends on the other stuff you do. If you look at housewives, then probably they will run 60 meters uh, um, Probably uh, half a second faster, but it's not due to vibration only. It's easy to improve if you if you don't if you have a very low level. Yeah, right, right, right. So we're talking world class athletes who are already beginning to, to venture into where their genetic capacity was. Uh, yeah. So you're you're talking about extremely important improvements at that yeah. level. That's huge. I mean, that's you know a tenth is the difference between being a gold medalist and not getting a medal. Yeah, uh, in, in many instances. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that absolutely might make it. If you use it for one season, if you do it well, you would, uh, might see a tremendous improvement. But then again, you have to the right machine, the right protocol, and the right frequency to work to, to work with. And, and that, lead, that leads me to one last question on that on that on that frequency. Is there does that frequency change over the athlete's career? or Does it stay the same? It will change. It will change, but not uh, from 20 to 55 hertz or from 55 to 20. I've never seen that. It's a change. And um, most of the time, the majority is a change in, in, in a lower frequency, strange enough, not in a higher frequency, which, which puzzled us as well. So there's a couple of things that, that puzzled us from the very start uh, of, of, the, of the vibration training. That's number one. Uh, the fact that, that the 
adaptation is very fast and, and, and the loss of, of it was very slow. Um, the second one was, uh, was of course, uh, this one that the frequency changed. Yes, absolutely. But why? We don't know. We know that it changed and we expect it to go up instead of going down. Yeah. But it actually went the other way. It went the other way, yeah, yeah, yeah. So from 30 hertz, after one year testing people, hey, we tested again a couple of times, then we found 30 hertz uh, very consistently. Or from 40 to 35, or from 45 to 40, so it, it went back five. Uh, but and in some cases it stayed the same, and, 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 and a few, very few cases it, it went up. And uh, we have no clue why that would be. <coughs> <laughs> but, but you know that that's exactly what happened, though, because you were able to confirm that with the EMG. Uh, monitor, yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. You do, you're, you're able to kind of target, and that's one thing that, that needs to be noted is that the EMG was critical to the Nemesis, uh, and it's not on a lot of the other devices, but it's critical to knowing there's an optimal vibration for an athlete, and it's yeah. very specific to that athlete. There is not a one-size-fits-all kind of protocol as far as frequency goes. It has to be kind of checked out on the EMG. No, if you if you're looking at statistics, that's fine. If you do a research and you have a hundred athletes and thirty improved, and say, "Hey, great," well, seventy of them don't improve. When you work with a small group of elite athletes and you're going for gold medals and for uh, for world records, and obviously you want them all to perform well. <laughs> right, 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 right. Three out of ten, you want all ten of them uh, to get the very best out of them. Yeah, if we're going to be there doing it, we might as well be doing it right. Obviously, yeah. there's no sense in in, in screwing up. Uh, now, this leads to, to the other concept of vibration training, mm -hmm. uh, which is different. It's not whole body vibration. Uh, it, it can be, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong at any point here. If I, if I recite this incorrectly, please correct me. Uh, this could be in the form of a single limb by virtue of uh, sometimes a, a cable uh, that will vibrate. Uh, and you can use different exercises with the cable. Uh, it, in, in, and also, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Bosco also uh, would uh, uh, use barbells or dumbbells that could be vibrated. Yeah. Um, as well as, uh, if I remember correctly, back in the early days of the Nemesis, they also had a handheld vibration device where you just held on two handles and you just held on with both hands, if I remember that correctly. Um, I, I, no, no, no. He had a, a vibrating dumbbell. It was the dumbbell. Okay, okay. It was a dumbbell with a, a, a kind of a telephone, old-fashioned telephone extension cord. You know the the. Yes. The, the, <laughs> yes. yes. Like extension cord. So, and you could set the, the frequency as well. Great. <laughs> and so those would be used obviously for upper body stuff. Can you explain to us the difference between single limb vibration training and whole body vibration? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's there's a there's a lot of. Uh, Problems to, to solve, not problems, but, but things we don't know yet. Number one, single limb vibration, it could be arms or legs or one arm or one leg at a time, of course has a localized effect. It's limited to that limb that you're vibrating. Well, whole body vibration, if you're standing on the, on the platform, then even your eyes and, and your ears and your, your skull start to shake. That's not what you want, but it's really whole body. Yeah. So there's more of a systemic effect and a more effect on the hormonal system. Well, uh, 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 single limb vibration doesn't give you any hormonal effect at all. So that's, that's the, the first uh, difference. The second one, which is a, a puzzle as well, is that there doesn't seem to be that much of an optimum uh, frequency to work with, which, which is like, hey, why, why not? Why not? Yeah. Uh, why, why can't we find an optimum frequency with, with to say, if you use a, 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 a dumbbell uh, curl and you, you use a, for the bicep, put EMG on the biceps, it doesn't matter much if you do 20 hertz or 50 hertz or 40 hertz. It didn't make a difference. That was kind of strange, wasn't it? Yeah. So that's, uh, well, that was a puzzle. I can show you I did a lot of work with EMG. The EMG, I, I must say, I never, almost never worked worked with uh, vibration without using the EMG. Right. So just to see the effects of it, any position, any knee angle, any... Okay, you're standing on your toes, so calf muscle exercise, and see what it does to the calves, and what it does to the quads, and to the hamstrings. So there are many questions uh, uh, to be answered. So I, I, I kind of did this in, a, in a, a, almost before 2001. I, I answered all these questions for myself and for my athletes. I'm not a researcher. I don't have to do these questions for, for research, but for myself and for my athletes. But in the meanwhile, I find out a lot of interesting things. Well, that's, that's the beauty of having these conversations with you is that you are looking just for answers for your athletes instead of 
publishing and 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 that's what we're all about you know we write you know our our, my, our authors write you know the various books on the science but you know the the coach needs information he can use uh yeah. and yeah. stuff that's been tried out in on the track or in the weight room real life stuff and i think this is what uh you know the lister you know they they want to know cuz they read stuff and it's so complicated sometimes <laughs> yeah, you know and then it's hard to understand i don't even understand i publish a lot of the books and i don't understand them uh yeah. you know to the degree that i should you know yeah. uh but you know i think that's where a lot of stuff gets misconstrued and then you'll see people make application of a concept totally incorrect because they didn't understand the concept to begin with or they didn't talk to somebody who had actually done it which is yeah. in this case with you, which is great, is that that you've actually done it and you could tell me exactly what happened instead of, uh, you know, quoting a, a, a book or a study for us. You know, I, uh, you could tell me exactly what your experience was, which is huge, you know, I think. Uh, I read all the research, believe me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you, proved, you went out and proved it for yourself, which is yeah. the key to, to well, see well, what worked and what didn't work. No, the athlete stands on the platform and says, Hank, it's great. I feel it in my cars, but what does it do to my to my quads? Yeah. And would it also work uh, for my for my uh, for my pecs? Would it also work for my pecs if I stand on the vibration platform? Uh, no idea. Let's let's find out if it does anything. <laughs> so, yeah, I give a lot of credit to my athletes, which I taught to be very critical of me. Uh, they ask me the questions or give me the space to invent their own exercise, they ask questions to me, keep me sharp, and make them better. Right, right, right. Well, they, you know, like I said, you had been producing results, so they figured they could keep trusting you. I know this. Uh, there's been many times the athletes look at me strangely when I, when we put the training together, and they're like, I don't know about this guy. And then uh, <laughs> once I, once we can produce some results, then they, you know, then they, then they, 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 they become a little more trusting and and uh, you know, take take my advice. But you got to pr prove it to them. you. Got to give them credit actually for for trusting you and taking a leap. <laughs> you know when you're when you especially when you're doing something that's maybe a little more unconventional you know yeah yeah uh, uh yeah the athlete needs to be credited definitely for for, for kind of blindly trusting us <laughs> <laughs> so now with this being the case it, it's not hormonal it's not systemic the vibration is local now yeah. here's the question i read i read a couple of studies uh that and one of our authors, actually Vladimir Isurin, uh, had had uh, done a few. Of, he's done uh, some of the studies on this stuff, uh, and he said that power increased significantly with vibration, single in vibration training, yeah. and so I, and also that it didn't work with lower level athletes. It only worked with an athlete who was high level. You know, they 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 experimented it with novice, and they said it didn't work at all. But if the athlete was on the higher end, it's kind of what you alluded to earlier about vibration, the whole body vibration training. What what is your what are you what are your thoughts on that? Interesting because it didn't have any, even have any low level athletes <laughs> to right, try it. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, not surprisingly, according to us, I always find good results. But you know, it's not I didn't have the low level athlete or let me say like Camelo who tested fifty housewives or uh, doing fitness. Right. To, to, to test the vibration, but they didn't have that population, so I, I found always good results. That, that a absolutely, you have to be very critical of that as well, because it might not work for you. If you start running and you run 100 meters in 15 seconds, this might not work for you. But like I said, then you shouldn't use it in the first place, because you should have the level to use it. Yes. So these things coincide very well. So if you use a lower level athletes, which have other priorities, if sitting in a starting block like this, then... You have other priorities than standing on a vibration platform or using single limb vibration to improve your performance. Now, what what would be uh, are the rules similar in terms of max level of exposure uh, uh -huh. to vibration training? Is that different than whole body as far as how much exposure you'd want or where it would be a negative? Um, well, there's not too many sports who who, who uh, only uh, <laughs> are performed with one limb only. <laughs> right. So now, if you do five minutes, whole body, everything is shaped for five minutes. If you do five minutes for uh, your left arm, then your right arm didn't do anything. So also your other arm has to be done for five minutes. So in the end, you got much more. Uh, it, it takes more time. Let me say that. Yeah. And we use it as well for the for the arms as for the for the for the legs as well. And, and you don't see it as being uh, like the, the the the. You didn't run into a situation of 
where you were worried about chronic overexposure to the vibration, the single limb stuff. Oh. Uh, it, you don't have the same <clears throat> concerns that you have with whole body vibration as, in terms no, of overexposure. Acceleration, the acceleration was a lot less because uh, the, the vibration uh, for dumbbell was very mild. You could yeah. hold a dumbbell and nothing happened. Yeah. You would do on the vibration platform when you would do the, the, the push ups. Yeah. You, you'd be in trouble. Yeah. Because you, you can stand on your legs for hours at an end. Your legs are perfectly built for, for absorbing a high force and, 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 and high vibration uh, impact. But your, 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 uh, uh, your arms are not, and your fingers are definitely not. See an uh, athlete sitting in the starting blocks in this position, and then when the, he's on the floor, you can see his knuckles already turning white. Yeah. These the little joints here and the muscles and the are not used to are not designed for high force impact or for high vibration. That's why you always see more problems with uh, uh, chainsaws and drill hammers. Yes. So that means the upper body doesn't absorb it very uh, very well. It's not designed for it. Well, our legs basically are. If you if you just walk and you do in slow motion, take a a front view of your quads, you can see the vibration over your quads. It gets even worse when you sprint or when you do the the, 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 tri the triple jump, the very beautiful pictures of uh, Victor Sani of the triple Olympic champion in triple jump in 1972. They're beautiful pictures of his quads in slow motion, his quads, seeing the vibration of the quads when he, when he lands at the triple jump, you know, after the hop and after the step. You see this vibration. So... The dumbbell was perfect, and uh, the, the Atlas system that we used, the, the vibrating rings from gymnastics, perfect. But you know, the vibration impact is, is, is a lot lower. The, the acceleration wasn't that hard on the body. Right. Well, the, the platform was made for the lower body, so it, it needed to give some impact because it's absorbed by the legs and by the muscle mass of the lower body. So, so to clarify, though, you, you would also, you, you could use vibration training, single limb vibration for the legs, but it's a different, correct me if I'm wrong, because it, it is a different mechanism, correct? Yeah, absolutely. It so is you a different use mechanism. both yeah. uh, uh, if you want to. Uh, and would you, uh, was it most of the time used when the, when the, when the limb is in a prone position or uh, superimposing it over the top of maybe certain exercises? Um, I used more the, the, the local vibration from, uh, from uh, Nazarov. That means the uh, vibrating box. It's a box that you can adjust the height and adjust the angle. And uh, the vibrating rings. Okay. And superimposed, you use the one, but it was always a kind of bothersome because you need to f put a vibration instrument on uh, in between the cables somehow. And somehow, the well, it was more of a, of a technical problem to do. We did it once in a while, and, and, and it felt really good. Now we have this machine, the Eccentrics, in which it's built in. It's a cable that vibrates as well. You can set the frequency and the amplitude as well. But from, from an EMG, you can see it works uh, great if you do vibration or not. It, it enhances the, the, the neuromuscular facilitation. So good effect. And also effect on don't forget effect on on, on flexibility. That's why the first local vibration, the single limb vibration, were were also built to increase flexibility in, in gymnasts. Right. So, well, you get the best of both worlds. You get an increase in power and increase in strength, and you got increase in flexibility as well, which is great. Let me say in in, in uh, tennis. I don't know if you showed the, the little uh, video, uh, the one second video last time. It was taken from a French TV station where they did a vibration with uh, Mary Pierce. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, on the rings. So, so I used, that was local, and she used whole body vibration as well. And that, so, so you, because of the eccentrics, and by the way, you know, people can look that up. I think if they go on your blog, they can kind of get more information about the eccentrics, yeah. I believe. Uh, and, and I think it, Marco Pozo developed that uh, yeah. in, uh, in Europe. So, yeah. so if you had the choice, because now you have the eccentrics, if you have the choice, Instead of having the, the, the limb in a prone position, you would like to be able to superimpose it over maybe specific exercises because of now that it's, it's easier from a practical point of view. Would that be your choice to use to superimpose it over exercises or would you still be more likely to use it just in the prone position? Candy store. I'm, a kid, also, I'm a kid in a candy store. I want it all. <laughs> So we want the whole body vibration, I want to have the ring still, and I want to have the cable in which I can do, let me say, hamstring exercises, or okay. I can 
for instance, uh, even uh, attach it to, uh, to uh, say, uh, uh, abdominal exercise in yes. a machine or something. So uh, it doesn't really matter. I want to... We want uh, both. You, well, you um, and I think alike. That's why I'm asking the question. We think alike. Yeah. I'm wondering what's the maximum benefit. So we would, we would put... We use our whole body. We use our single limb, and we use our single limb as much as we can, superimposed over specific movements yeah. uh, that we can we can kind of uh, enhance the quality of maybe a specialized exercise. For sprinters and jumpers, you use whole body vibrations, mainly the lower body. For throwers, for uh, baseball players, for tennis players, of course, you want to have the rings or the superimposed vibration by doing uh, uh, seated rows or doing lap pulleys or doing bicep curls. Then you use the, the uh, single limb more, but mm, single limb for uh, uh, for the lower body. Well, I also want the hormonal effect and do the whole body uh, uh, do the whole body uh, vibration. That's a perfect stimulus for the lower body. Sure, sure. So it, there's there's actually a complementary effect between the two, using them. Uh, yeah. In, yeah. In, in different situations, so you you would have uh, cycles where you might use both in the same training session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before so, a tennis workout, for instance, uh, because I have the video here. I, I found back the video that I showed you last time. It's very short. It's only one second, but I have it. This one I showed, I think. Yes. Or we yeah. discussed it, at least. I don't know if we, if we looked at it on the podcast. What you see here is the, is the uh, can you see it? Yeah. This is yes. the, the, the old uh, Nemesis machine. Yeah. This, uh, the, this was the small one, the 30 kilograms one. Okay. And this is then the, the Nazarov machine with the two rings and, and Mary Pierce is performing these uh, these exercises here. It's more of a, of a flexibility exercise in the first place. Sure, sure. And, and it's an example of a prone position, obviously, of just being in one, staying in one position. Or did she move around with this? Move around, move around. Okay. Yeah, you can do everything. You can do, uh, the, the machine was so, or still, it's so solid, you can, you can, you, you can do pull-ups on the machine and it doesn't break or something. It's very, very solid, a heavy and solid machine. So you can do kind of exercises, um, whatever you want, whatever you want. Yeah, so that, that's a, a good thing uh, as well. well so, let me see. I'm still back. Ah, here you see. Le drôle de see going left, going right, stretch the pecs. See? Yeah. Bend a little bit more, bending forward, and so on and so on. This is just a, a warming up. And then she would do the... Then she would do. Did I find it here? Yeah. Des machines qui font aujourd'hui découvrir à Marie Pierce une toute nouvelle approche. Short one second. I know I, it wasn't just a French television, so you know how the French are. Right, <laughs> right. And then we, of course, we use the, um, this uh, coach over here, <clears throat> and. Um, we also used the, the Omega Wave to, uh, to, to test her for, uh, well, at that time, to see also the impact of vibration, of course. <laughs> and, and, it, and, and it doesn't uh, cause a lot of overtraining uh, or any overtraining from what I, what I gathered from what you've said before. No. No. There's nothing, no. there's nothing going on there. So you can truly actually verify there's no expense to the adaptation uh, reserves of the body by by using vibration, either no. single limb or whole body? Uh, no, 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 no um, nothing whatsoever in any of them, but as long as you don't go overboard, like I said, and I must say that nine out of 10 coaches want to do, oh, if five, five, five uh, minutes is okay, why not do 15 minutes or right. 15 minutes? In the end, people spend an hour, a workout, uh, an hour on the vibration platform. Right. And of course, that would cause trouble for the pelvis and for the internal organs and for the head and all kind of crazy exercise on the vibration platform. That would cause trouble, not you, the way uh, I, I used it uh, or we used it. So really, this is a great tool, you know, with with an athlete uh, who who is an older, a little higher level. Uh, not only is the whole body vibration great, you can also integrate in the single limb vibration, superimpose mm -hmm. it over top of exercises in the way that uh, uh, the eccentrics has been designed. Um, mm -hmm. I've even seen it on leg press machines uh, where they'll put the, the vibration on, on it, and so you can do it while you're actually executing exercises uh, yep. on, on the uh, leg press. So really, I, I guess the thing for, for, for everybody to kind of uh, take away is that, you know, here's two totally separate tools. They're not to be confused with each other, whole body vibration, single limb vibration training. Both of them improve force development uh, yep. very well. 
exceptionally mm-hmm. well, and they don't have a uh, a high end adaptation, or or I'm sorry, a low end adaptation. It take it, they can continue to work over the course of an athlete's entire career and be a, a, an important integral tool in that process. Yeah, yeah. We we could have looked what the end would be when the adaptation would stop, but we didn't. Why why would we? Because then the vibration and the result of vibration would be uh, an end to itself, and we use it as a means to run faster on the track, not to see how much adaptation you get by only vibration. This is the this is the limitation. Right. So, so, so it 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 it, it has long term value, not just a one time off season bump and improvement, no, no, no. but over the course of a whole career. And that's uh, my anytime we talk concepts, my first my mind always first runs to okay, how long is this? What's how long will this work? Yeah. <laughs> because we always know, you know, as you know, you know, you can only get them so strong, and then strength training no longer affects, you know, their their improvement. It can actually be a negative. You work with athletes sometimes 10 to 12 years, so you also want to see what's happening in the end. If they come out in a wheelchair, then somehow your training didn't work that well. <laughs> we did something wrong. <laughs> yeah, something <laughs> right. we, yeah, we got to zero in on what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyway, I, I guess the, 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 the great thing for, for everybody to know is, number one, whole body vibration, as it's been introduced in the United States, by and large, is not that great. Most of the machines don't work. There's only, as you said, there were only three. One's not in business anymore. One of them might not be in, does not doing much business uh, in the United States. And then the the last one, uh, which was the Galileo, uh, did have uh, a benefit, not to the same degree the Nemesis did, but it was, is a good tool, uh, and that's the one that's being used in the United States um, uh, the most. I would get. I'm sorry, of the three that work, that's the one that has the most uh, exposure. Uh, there's many other platforms out there that are a lot of exposure in the United States, and none of them work. Uh, and because I, I, I you, you, it got very popular probably ten years ago, maybe ten to twelve yeah. years ago. Yeah, 10 years went ago, through a phase years. of about three or four years of use, yeah. and then people started realizing it wasn't working. Man, it fell out of favor pretty quick. Mainly for losing weight, which doesn't really work, and mainly for uh, whatever. Uh, Getting muscles real quick, like tremendous anabolic effects, and that's just a joke. That doesn't that doesn't work. It doesn't. But osteoporosis and increasing exposed strength, the perfect tool, I would say. Yeah, and like I said, I used it with uh, uh, patients who had peripheral neuropathy from diabetes. Yeah. Worked excellent. It actually, yeah. it, I, this is a miracle, and I don't know why this isn't talked about in the United States. All it will absolutely halt the process. Of, uh, of of the the neuropathy just you know destroying the blood vessels in the in the feet yeah. absolutely hold off amputation indefinitely and there's yeah. people getting amputations every day here in the United States as a result of peripheral neuropathy and it's not necessary uh, you can absolutely stop it I think in the first um, months of using it uh, uh, or getting the machine I already had two clients with uh, had a very serious uh, peripheral neuropathy and uh, they were doing absolutely fabulous with that. They, they, indeed, they also prevented amputations or people with or other neuromuscular diseases. This is great. You train the nervous system and you train the muscle. So, yeah, it really is a it's a wonderful tool. We we saw results with Parkinson's patients. Uh, we help with their their motor control. Uh, also with elderly patients who just are have that normal decline in yeah. motor ability. Uh, the vibration training helped to to reverse that process. And, yeah. and to bring it back, so they, so one of the things that also that's tremendously valuable is the geriatric population, where maybe they have joint issues and they're not able to really do any strength training. They could do vibration training, which would 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 serve as a great substitute and great yeah. value for for that patient uh, as well, helping to stave off you know other age related uh, uh, problems. So yeah, I mean it has a, has a great deal. Of uh, of application there, but for our purposes in the athlete, you know, if you have an athlete that's at a higher level, and uh, you know it's appropriate, uh, then the vibration training could be a great tool to help uh, kind of spring forward, you know, your results and, and maybe take them up to a level that is the difference between winning and losing. Uh, yeah. It's not a it's not a miracle. It's not going to make no. a super athlete out of an average guy, but it is a great tool, almost a miracle. I don't want to say miracle, but a great tool for us because it comes at very little expense to the to to the athlete and, yeah. and the coach 
as far as adaptate uh, reserves and things like this and energy and um, injury risk. And it has only upside. There's no really no downside to it. Um, no, about injury risk as well. You can, for instance, if people have Achilles tendon problems, then the increased circulation in the, in the lower leg, especially in the lower part, of course, yep. then you can already see that the that the, the, the skin of the of the calf muscle it turns red. You know, you see the yes. hyperemia in there. So you and also the the um, repetitive uh, vibration always stretches the, the the tendon in a very fast rate. Yes. The kind of micro stretch uh, in there at a high, very high frequency. Great results with Achilles tendon problems and knee problems as well. Yeah, and I, I saw the same thing. You definitely, uh, post surgical, uh, post injury, you could, are able to turn things around real quickly to get them back, you know, on track uh, 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 in a quick fashion because of that. So, injury recovery, performance, and a host of other maladies. Vibration training, whole body, and vibration training, single limb, both have yep. great applications and should definitely be looked at. And, and I'd advise everybody, you know, look at uh, uh, the Eccentrics website. Uh, could you could you tell us what the website is for that? I'm not sure exactly what that is. I'll 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 um, make sure you get it. Okay, we'll po we'll post it. We'll post it. Uh, we'll have Jeff uh, post that later. Uh, uh, on the uh, website so that people can kind of check that idea out. I think maybe some people may be curious. Yeah. Well, Hank, I appreciate your time on vibration training uh, here over these last two podcasts. It's been great. Uh, I've learned a lot, and I've, I've had one for 10 years, and I learned a lot, too, uh, of, of the different applications and what you saw with it. Uh, it'll only enhance now my use of it, being able to kind of be more precise with it. So I, I really appreciate uh, all the knowledge personally because it's uh, – it's really useful to me as well. So I appreciate your time as always. And okay. uh, we're going to talk again, I think, next time about the electrostimulation idea, which is kind of kind of a uh, similar uh, tool in, in the way that the vibration is. A uh, totally different mechanism, but similar in its uh, effect of not costing, you know, having a high cost and the hypergravity uh, idea as well. So we're, we're looking forward to talking to you about those next time. And okay. Until then, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. And uh, we'll talk to you here real soon.